So my name is Whitney Benjamin and I am a clinical supervisor and a therapist at Recovery Pathways. I have been working in the outpatient field of substance use disorder since 2016. I guess part of the reason that I do what I do is I'm in recovery and I've been in recovery for 13 years. Um, my best friend passed away from an opioid overdose and I have a significant history of friends and family who struggle with the disease of addiction, alcoholism, as well as drug addiction. I think probably what stands out to me and part of the reason, you know, that my journey is important is that understanding that someone might not get it the first time and they might not necessarily get it the 12th time, but it might be that 15th time or that 20th time. So even for the people who might drop out of treatment or discharge or be resistant to change or maybe not be ready to give up a certain substance, continuing to just treat them with kindness and compassion because you never know when that like switch is gonna flip on and you never know when they're gonna kind of move from I don't want to give up using to like I'm ready to quit so I think that's kind of how my own personal journey has helped like me within my work field too I think part of it is just having conversation because if they're not admitting that a drug or alcohol is the issue, maybe they're, if it's youth, they can see that their grades are failing in school. If it's an adult, maybe they can see they've lost four jobs over the last five years. So having just a non-judgmental conversation about kind of like what's going on in their life and what are some of the barriers to what their short-term and long-term goals are and not avoiding talking about how the substance is impacting that but if they're not able to kind of make that you know association or turning point change on their own just having the conversation of what's you know not going right in their life and how are some of the areas they would like to change and what are some of the ways that you know continuing using or being involved in you know what they're involved in right now are going to prevent you know those things from changing The one thing that I would tell parents to be aware of is that like drugs are everywhere, whether it is within the schools, within households, whether it's, you know, your friends, parents or your kids' friends that are using, but just kind of educate yourself on what are drugs and what is the, you know, reality of what drugs can do to youth, as well as having those honest conversations with kids. I think a lot of times we go from the generation of like dare kids who like use drugs and you're gonna die immediately. And that generation of kids then found out that if I, you know, smoked weed or I drank and I didn't die, it kind of led to a lot of other substances. And by the time we were utilizing, you know, heroin or an alcoholic, then we could see the problem. But because the D.A.R.E. program essentially kind of taught a lot of that, like, use something and you'll die without the middle steps of like, you know, obviously using drugs can cause euphoria. It does make you feel good. It takes away your anxiety and your depression. Like, it makes you feel more energetic and outgoing. So I think for parents, I would say educate yourselves on what, you know, some of the effects are for, you know, drugs and also having kids or parents have those conversations with kids in terms of these are drugs, this is, you know, drug abuse, this is substance use disorder, this is, you know, alcohol use disorder, this runs in the family, I've struggled with this, so that kids are aware of, you know, what could possibly be some barriers in the future, or if, you know, they're using substances or their friends are using substances, what some of the consequences could be. For parents, understanding like generational like substance use disorder, I mean whether their parents were alcoholics and addicts, um, and then like whether their kids could, you know, potentially be, you know, alcoholics or addicts or have that, you know, trait. Because not only is it the environment or the kids or the associations, but you know, part of intergenerational addiction kind of comes down. So like being able to say like, you know, your grandpa was an alcoholic, I was an alcoholic, like there's a potential that if you choose to drink, like you could also struggle with this. And this is really what it means. You know, you could lose your kids, your house, your money, your, you know, everything that you want to work towards 
that might not necessarily prevent, you know, a teen or an early adult from picking up and drinking, but at least it would give that information to kind of like set the groundwork of like where, you know, family came from and what you risk. And then if you do find yourself in head over heels and you're struggling with alcoholism, then you know I can go to my mom. I know I can go to my grandpa. I can go to my dad. I can get help. There won't be that shame and that stigma. There's not a lot of conversations being had. There's not a lot of, you know, kids who are saying, yeah, I'm smoking weed and I don't want to quit and I don't really, you know, know what to do. No parent, grandparent wants their kid to drink or smoke weed or sneak out or, you know, make bad decisions, but, you know, it happens. But if we just, like, turn our head that, like, those aren't our kids and those people that live in our communities, then we kind of miss an opportunity to educate, inform, support, help people shift on that spectrum of like, I don't want to change and quit using to like, I'm just a person who's struggling. Okay, now I want to get better and I don't want to do this anymore. That one's actually really difficult because I think kids in that age, like that age range, and I have a couple clients right now that I think of, there's not realistically even as a provider much to be able to say that I think changes that mind frame of invincibility but I would say you know kind of reducing the stigma around if I'm going to use drugs or if I'm around using drugs being able to have a conversation you know not enabling I'm not going to go tell mom or grandma I'm going to go get higher use but feeling comfortable enough that I was in a place or at a party or I saw someone doing this and being open and honest and wanting to know more about substances. So I guess I would tell kids to not like stop questioning like what it is that they're ingesting or what it is that they're using or how this is going to impact them and then maybe even looking at decreasing that shame and stigma around is there you know mental health is there anxiety and depression do i need someone to talk about um talk to my talk to a therapist about my issues or talk to someone about you know what is really going on with me that i feel like i might need to use these substances